So um, just a couple things before I, I toss it over to Adrian. Um, we do have one more webinar um, coming up uh, to kind of round out this, this steam timber. Um, so next Wednesday, um, we've got Nick Westerberg, and he's going to be talking about steam trap selection, installation, and testing. Um, he's just a wealth of knowledge and um, when I said it was only an hour long webinar, he was like, oh, you didn't need it to be like a two day thing. I was like, no, no. So um, he certainly has lots of lots of content to share and I'm sure he'll uh, pack all that he can into into the hour. So if um, if you're available for that, uh, you'll see the invite actually already went out this week, but we'll send another one out. So so take a look and, and sign up for that if, if you can make it. Um, some housekeeping. I am recording this like we do with, with all of our webinars, so I'll have it online um, so you can refer back to it um, if, if you are going to be, you know, generating these reports. Um, so you can use that as a tool to kind of reference um, and obviously to share it with anybody that that may, may have had to miss this um, that's on your team. Um, we also invite you to ask questions. Um, you can type those in. I'll be keeping an eye on those. I'll get those to Adrian um, so he can get them answered. Some questions, you know, we may need to hold off and, and get you some help offline. So um, I'll just type back to you if that's gonna be the case. But uh, anyway, with that, I'll let uh, Adrian take it away. All right, thank you, Maureen, appreciate that. I'll just get my screen pulled up here. All right. Yeah, today may be the first day of fall, but I know uh, over the weekend here in South Carolina, it's supposed to be like 93 degrees on Saturday. So uh, it will, we'll get there eventually. Uh, but again, thank you for attending today. Uh, I hope you found this very informative. Um, and you know, steam trap inspection with ultrasound is an application that dates back to the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, for those of you that are old enough to remember, uh, the United States was in an energy crisis. So the two biggest applications for ultrasound at that time were compressed air and gas leak detection and steam trap inspection, just simply because everyone was focusing on reducing energy consumption and uh, helping to conserve energy. Uh, now that's certainly changed uh, in today, you know, where we are with ultrasound. Um, still by far the biggest application for compressed air and gas leak, uh, or for ultrasound is compressed air and gas leak detection. And we've made that even easier uh, to report those, uh, the savings that can be associated from finding and repairing uh, compressed air leaks with our new app that you can download for free. Uh, on the iTunes Store or the Google Play to where right from your phone to your tablet you can generate uh, the compressed air and gas report that will put a dollar amount and a CFM loss to how much those compressed air and gas leaks are costing you. So it's a great way to show a quick return on investment. Uh, but you know, probably the next biggest application for ultrasound in today's, uh, you know, where we are with the technology is you know, really equipment reliability, condition monitoring of rotating equipment, um, and condition-based lubrication of bearings. Uh, simply because every plant, every facility doesn't have steam, they don't utilize steam, and then the ones that do, they use that steam for, you know, different processes. So uh, maybe it may be more related to, you know, your product, or maybe you're using it more for a heating, or uh, if you're in food and beverage, you may be using it as part of the, the process. Um, but certainly if you have steam, uh, using ultrasound for steam trap inspection is a good application. Uh, now before we can get into the reporting and documentation and showing you how to generate the report, uh, there's some things that we have to understand. You know, we have to understand how to test a steam trap with ultrasound and then the sound characteristics, you know, what the different traps are supposed to uh, sound like based off of their operation and how they're, uh, how they're being used in the steam system. Uh, first couple of slides, though, uh, I like to include some some energy facts related to steam traps. You know, if you look at overall fuel consumption, um, you know, for over 45 percent of all the fuel burned by U.S. manufacturers is consumed to raise steam. And then another statistic here from the Department of Energy is a typical facility can realize steam savings of 20 percent just by simply improving the steam system. And one of the ways that you can improve the steam system is to you know, properly maintain and inspect your steam traps. Uh, certainly a lot of other things come into play, but in terms of ultrasound, uh, it's very easy uh, to go out and inspect and, and um, test steam traps once you understand what the sound characteristics of those traps are supposed to be. 
a similar statistic to what you hear with compressed air. You know, the compressed air companies, most of them will tell you that 30% of the compressed air being generated uh, at the compressor is lost to leaks. Uh, similar with steam traps. You know, approximately 20% of the steam leaving a central boiler plant is lost via leaking steam traps. So again, if we can go out and inspect our steam traps uh, and determine which ones are working properly, which ones are leaking by or possibly failed open, uh, we can significantly go out and have some uh, uh, real savings here that we can show as, as well as improve the overall steam system uh, efficiency. Now, steam trap inspection with ultrasound is a leak detection application. So underneath the leak detection applications, the source of the ultrasound is turbulence. So we're listening for something that's under high pressure that's being, uh, in this case with steam traps, discharged to the low pressure side. That creates turbulence. Uh, if you have a trap that's in a leak by condition, so if the trap is supposed to be in the closed position and we're checking on the outlet or the discharge side of the trap, we'll be able to hear the turbulence created from that steam leak by leaking across the seat of the trap. So again, the source of the ultrasound is turbulence, and it's also the same with compressed air and gas leaks to where you have something under high pressure trying to exit out through a tiny crack or orifice out to low pressure or atmosphere, uh, vacuum leaks or air in leakage, and then internal leaks across the valves. You know, it's important to realize that with steam trap inspection, uh, one technology can't do everything. Uh, if you're only relying on temperature, that's really only giving you half the picture as to the proper uh, or what that trap is, is doing from an operational standpoint. So temperature, you know, again, you have other variables that come into play. You know, if you're in an area where it's just normally, uh, you know, hot ambient temperature, you know, temperatures can tend to give you some false readings. And again, it really only gives you half of the picture as to the health of that steam trap. So uh, incorporating a multiple a multi-technology approach to testing your steam traps is really the way to go. And it's the same with, the, with any other technology. You know, vibration analysis can't do everything. Uh, infrared thermography can't do everything. But a combination of multiple technologies and you, you can gather enough information to make a good diagnosis on the health of that piece of equipment that you are responsible for uh, inspecting. Uh, along with creating awareness and safety, uh, certainly with steam there are some safety issues. Uh, here in South Carolina just a few weeks ago, a plant about an hour away from me uh, made the local news that they had a, uh, a person that had to be airlifted to the local burn center uh, because of a severe steam burn that they were exposed to. Um, so certainly with steam, we also we want to always practice uh, proper safety measures, uh, proper training. Uh, it's it's highly recommended that uh, you attend some sort of steam trap training class and understand the dynamics and in the design of your overall steam system. And then along that, we can uh, do the reporting and documentation, which we'll get into towards the end of the webinar once we talk about, you know, how to test steam traps with ultrasound. So the purpose of an ultrasonic steam trap sur survey should be to identify and correct any faulty traps that you may have. And again, these faulty traps, they can impact both your energy consumption, uh, so there's some dollar, you know, real dollar savings that can be associated with uh, finding and repairing. Uh, faulty steam traps. Uh, there may be some uh, steam traps that can impact safety and sustainability. You know, a lot of companies now want to track their uh, reduction in carbon footprint, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and uh, overall energy consumption. And then there may be some items that could impact your product quality. So again, if you have faulty steam traps, you know, there may be uh, uh, some impacts to quality, and that can produce downtime, and uh, you know, we're not running as efficiently as we should. So our inspection options. Uh, most people uh, are at a minimum using some sort of temperature measurement for inspecting their steam traps. Uh, UE systems, we like to recommend the use of temperature first. And then if the, uh, you know, based off of what we're seeing with temperature, we can proceed to test with ultrasound. And I've got a, uh, a decision tree that we'll go into that once we're at the trap, um, uh, the kind of the steps that we need to follow and based off of uh, the progression through that decision tree will determine what uh, you need to do next. 
So again, we've got visual uh, temperature. Certainly, that's one clue that we can use to um, inspect steam traps to determine what the steam trap is doing and the health of, of the steam trap. With ultrasound, we're actually going to be able to listen uh, to what the trap is doing from an operational standpoint to make sure that it's operating properly or to see if the trap is leaking by steam or if it's in the failed open position. Uh, with ultrasound, uh, the instrument will respond when the dis uh, trap discharges. So once there's a release of steam uh, and conden or condensate, uh, therefore, again, we'll see an increase in the turbulence, and when we have an increase in turbulence, we also have an increase in the decibel level. So depending on what instrument you may be using to test your steam traps, the meter or the instrument will respond um, to when there is a change in the decibel level, when that trap is either cycling or modulating, or if the trap is failed open, there'll be a continuous blow through of steam, uh, and you will be able to hear that and then note that on the display of the instrument. So your temperature, um, you know, we're not talking about, you know, some, uh, you know, expensive infrared camera. It can be just as simple as a non-contact spot radiometer, uh, very cost effective. Uh, the biggest thing where I see people misusing the spot radiometers is they think that they can stand at the floor and shoot a trap 30 feet up in the ceiling. Well, you know, um, that's not going to give you an accurate temperature measurement because most of your uh, spot radiometers are going to have a field of view ratio. Uh, on the Ultra Probe 15,000, uh, it has the built-in spot radiometer. The field of view on that is 10 to 1. So just keep in mind that the farther you are away from that trap or whatever it is you're trying to measure the temperature of, that circle or that radius is going to be bigger the farther away you are from it. So um, with the 15,000, the temperature measurement is going to be most accurate when used with the contact probe or the, st or the stethoscope module. Um, and that's going to be making contact on the outlet or the discharge side of the trap, uh, and you'll get a fairly accurate temperature measurement. But again, temperature is only going to give you half the picture. Uh, you really need to, uh, once you've checked with temperature, you can proceed to test with ultrasound. And again, ultrasound will allow you to hear what's taking place inside of the trap to make sure that it's working properly or to make sure that there's not some subtle uh, leak by steam across the trap. Uh, without going into too much detail uh, as far as how ultrasound works, uh, we're basically we're listening for high frequency sound, sound that is above the range of normal human hearing. So in most cases, we don't have to be too concerned about uh, you know background noise. Uh, if your plant is uh, you know like a typical manufacturing facility, uh, it's going to be loud and out in some areas of your plant. But again, we're listening for sound that's above the range of normal human hearing. Now, you do have to uh, kind of be aware of uh, your steam system and some functionality. So I mentioned earlier that valve leakage, for instance, is, a, is an application for ultrasound where we can check for valves leaking by. So with valves, uh, for any of you that have been through any of our training classes, we recommend an A, B, C, D test method. So you have an A point somewhere just further upstream of the valve, B closer to the inlet side of the valve, C on the outlet side of the valve, and then D just somewhere a little further downstream. So you're basically comparing the decibel level readings at those four points. So if your higher decibel level is at your A point and that uh, decibel level drops across the four points, but A is your highest, then the noise or the source of the ultrasound is coming from further upstream of the valve. Uh, vice versa, if the uh, decibel level is highest at your D point, then the source of the ultrasound is coming further downstream. If the decibel levels are the same across all four points, then it's safe to say that the valve is open. If the valve is in a leak by condition, your higher decibel level will be at your C point. Therefore, um, again, that flow is being restricted through a smaller orifice and you have an increase in turbulence and an increase in noise on the C point. Uh, so again, when testing steam traps, you just have to be aware of um, elements in the steam system or in the piping where you may possibly pick up some competing uh, high frequency sound. But in most cases, uh, we don't have to be too concerned about any sort of competing noise. But again, just something to be aware of as you're out doing your test. But the instrument will then give you both a visual on the display of the instrument and an audible what you would hear in the headset. 
Now, with the instrument setting, um, if you're using the Ultra Probe 2000 or the 9000 or the, the 10 or the 15000, the frequency setting that we recommend for steam trap inspection is 25 kilohertz. Uh, for those of you who may be using, say, an Ultra Probe 100 or an Ultra Probe 3000, the instrument is going to be on a fixed frequency that's centered around 38 kilohertz. Uh, but if you have an instrument that has frequency tuning, uh, the frequency setting that we recommend for steam trap inspection is 25 kilohertz. Now, it also helps to uh, know, you know some information about your steam system. So for those of you that deal in lower pressure steam, you're going to want to have the, the sensitivity or the volume, um, or really the, the sensitivity is more like a gain. So when you increase the sensitivity, you're increasing the amount of power that's going down to that receiver. Um, so again, at lower pressure steam, you're not going to have as much high frequency sound or as much turbulence. So you want to make sure that the sensitivity is increased. For those of you that have higher pressure steam applications, the sensitivity will be lower. Now, uh, when it comes to testing st uh, steam traps, trap identification is going to be uh, one of the key things that you need to be able to identify. So you need to be able to walk up to a trap and identify what type of trap it is. Because based off the type of trap, that will determine the sound characteristic. So the sound characteristics with steam traps, it's either going to be an on and off or a hold, discharge, hold. Examples of those types of traps will be inverted bucket traps, disc traps, uh, thermodynamics to where if you're listening to that trap, you'll hear a very distinct cycling open and then you'll hear it shut. And then you'll hear it cycle again, open and then shut. Uh, now I was going to pull up towards the end of the webinar. We have a sound file recording uh, library on our website. It's underneath the resources tab of our website. And then once you click on resources, you'll see a link on the left for the um, sound recording library. And we have some sound file examples of good and bad traps uh, on there so you can hear what they're, uh, they're supposed to sound like. Now the second sound characteristic is going to be a continuous flow to where we have a, um, the trap will never cycle sh completely shut, but at least we should hear some sort of modulation that comes from the float that kind of rides up and down on the bed of condensate in the bottom of the trap. And again, the continuous flow sound characteristic will be uh, the F and T traps or the float and thermostatics. Again, you should hear at least some modulation. And in some cases, you can actually hear the float kind of clanging around inside the trap. If you hear that, then that lets you know the float is in there and it's properly working and doing its job. Now before you even go out to test the steam traps with temperature and ultrasound, you really need to plan your survey out. Uh, and I'll show you in the UltraTrend DMS software how really you can build in the DMS software your steam trap database. So inside of DMS, that really becomes your database of your steam traps. And to, to a lot of people, that's really their biggest challenge is just knowing where all the traps are, um, because you can only imagine some of these plants and facilities that have been added to or taken away, you know, uh, modifications that have been done. And if it's been several years since a steam trap survey has been done, it may be a challenge, you know, just locating all of the steam traps. But certainly before you ever go out to test the steam traps, plan it out, walk through, uh, start at the boiler room, work your way out to the distribution uh, lines, uh, and then finally down to where you know the steam is being used. Uh, so locate uh, all the traps, create some sort of uh, map and tagging system. Uh, I mentioned that you can use UltraTrend DMS to really set up your entire steam trap database. Uh, for setting up your instrument, you want to make sure that you're at the 25 kilohertz if you have an instrument that has the frequency tuning capability. Uh, and then at that point, really, we're ready to go out and then test the traps. So we're going to take out our temperature, we're going to take our ultrasound, uh, and then depending on what instrument you're using, uh, the Ultra Probe 10,000 or the 15,000, you can really enter everything right there uh, on the instrument itself. If you're using, say, the 2,000 or the 9,000, you may have to uh, you know, take something out to record and write some things down. 
Again, we want to try to make it as manageable as possible. So again, we recommend that you start out in the boiler room, you know, work your way out to the main distribution, distribution branches, uh, down to the process equipment, and then finally down to the condensate uh, recovery systems. Again, make it manageable because uh, I know some of you out there, you may have thousands of traps. So again, you want to try to make it as manageable as possible, break it up into areas, break it up into zones, uh, and that'll let, allow you uh, for better trending and better reporting. Uh, it'll make it more manageable. Other conditions to note, uh, oversized steam traps will barely open when condensate reaches it. Uh, if you've ever heard that, uh, it, it will sound uh, like a very distinct, almost like a, a flooding or like a gurgling sound. Uh, on the other hand, undersized steam traps will cycle too often. Uh, if you have uh, any, any sort of control valves, uh, condensate impurity, sediment, uh, rust, contaminants in the uh, steam system, uh, those are only going to wear the seats uh, and therefore you know, seats won't close properly uh, and that's certainly easily detected with ultrasound. Uh, undersized condensate lines creating high back pressure, uh, traps install backwards. Uh, we've probably all seen that. Uh, it seems like common sense, but you, you, again, you know, uh, it happens more than you probably realize. Uh, and then low steam temperatures due to flooded condensate lines. So too much condensate in the system will certainly uh, drop those steam temperatures. Other signs, uh, warning signs of possible steam trap failure, uh, abnormally warm boiler room. Uh, condensate receiver tank that's venting excessive steam. Uh, how many of you, when you're driving into your facility, you know, you take a look over the roof line just to see if you see any excess steam venting to atmosphere? Uh, could be an early, it could be an indication of some faulty traps. Uh, if you have pump seals that are failing prematurely, uh, could be an indication of uh, just poor uh, steam system maintenance, you know, again, impurities in the steam system, contaminants. Uh, the condition space is overheating or underheating. Uh, boiler operating pressure is difficult to maintain. Uh, vacuum in the return lines, and if you've got a severe case of va uh, vacuum in your steam system, that's going to create water hammer. Again, all things that you should note uh, when you're out, especially when you're out walking and mapping out your steam trap database. Now, I've already mentioned that regardless of the type of trap, uh, whether it's a floating thermostatic, whether it's an inverted bucket or a disc, the contact point for ultrasound, where we're going to make contact, is going to be on the outlet or the discharge or at the discharge orifice of the trap. Uh, so this uh, kind of shows you here some of the different traps and where that contact point should be. Okay, so the decision tree here. Uh, so once we've once we've created our steam trap database, uh, once we know where all the traps are, now we're ready to go out and start our inspection. So once we're at the trap, we have to, uh, some decisions to make. So we have to determine if the steam trap is operating. Uh, that's easily done by temperature or understanding uh, the process. You know what the steam trap's purpose is, and then we have to make sure that the valves are open. Now, if the steam trap is operating and the valves are open, then we can proceed to check with temperature. And we're testing basically to see if we have steam coming to the trap. So if the trap is hot or if the trap is cold. Now, if the trap is cold, uh, we can determine, uh, again, based off of the process, uh, based off the purpose of the trap, it's either going to be failed closed or plugged or it's not going to be in service. Or if the temperature is hot, we're going to note the inlet and outlet temperatures, and then we're going to proceed to test with ultrasound. Once we're ready to test with ultrasound, again, trap identification, so knowing what type of trap it is, will determine the sound characteristics. If it's a continuous flow trap, that's going to be floating thermostatic. If it's an inverted bucket, a thermodynamic, or a disc, or a thermostatic trap, that will be the on and off sound characteristic. Again, we're going to make contact at the discharge orifice of the trap, and based off of what we're hearing, we're going to be able to determine if the trap is working properly. Is it leaking by? Is it failed open? Is it failed closed? Or possibly not in service? 
and we're going to note that and then we're ready to do our reporting and documentation. Okay, for the steam trap report in UltraTrend DMS that we can generate, um, we have, again, uh, some information that we need to know. We need to know the type of trap. We need to know the orifice size. Now, it's been said that if the orifice size is unknown, and not all steam traps have a nameplate, if the trap has a nameplate, more than likely it's going to have the orifice size on that nameplate. But if it's, if it's unknown, uh, it's been said to use one-eighth of an inch, or you can estimate the orifice size based off the pipe size. Now, for the, uh, for the calculation, uh, and again, we'll, we'll generate this report and we'll show it to you, but uh, the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature, as you know, with steam equates to a pressure. So if we know that orifice size and we know the pressure, and if that trap is leaking by or blowing through, then, uh, again, that trap has a leak rate in pounds per hour across that orifice, and that's kind of the built into the back end of the formula. So at that point, we just have to know our cost of steam, so a dollar amount per thousand pounds. So we're going to note not only the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature, but we're also going to note the operating conditions. So is the trap okay? Is it leaking by? Is it blowing through? Is it plugged? Or is it not in service? Now, if you're, again, if you're using the UltraProbe 15,000 or the 10,000, you can enter that information right on board the instrument. Uh, the 15, it's actually even easier because it has the built-in spot radiometer. Uh, so uh, when you enable the STEAM application, uh, part of the data that you can store is that inlet, outlet temperature, the pipe size, the orifice size, and the test result. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go out into the UltraTrend DMS software. And you can download the software uh, from our website, for those of you that don't know. So if you go to uesystems.com, you'll see a link at the top for products. Once you click on products, then you'll see a, a link on the left for software. And the software that's used or that I'm using here is called UltraTrend DMS. And the current version that's available is 5.4.15. So if I just go here and about UltraTrend DMS, here is version 5.4.15. And you can download the latest version. Now, as far as our hierarchy here on the left, um, this is what we refer to as the plant level. So the plant can be anything you want to. Again, if you're in a facility where you have thousands of traps, you know, you may decide that each zone that you set up could possibly be a plant. Uh, it's really just how you want to set it up. But this is what we refer to as the plant level. And if I expand out the plant level, I can see that the application in this case is steam. Now, other applications that you can enable are leak. So if we're going to do a compressed air and gas leak survey, uh, we have bearings, we have electrical, uh, we have valves. So those are all the different applications that you can uh, enable here underneath your plant. Now, you can also have multiple applications underneath the same plant. So now inside of the STEAM application, I have two what we call groups, or these are the actual routes. And again, you can name these anything you want to, but the group is just a further breakdown of your plant level. So I'm going to expand out boiler room two. And we're going to see that inside boiler room number two, we have one boiler. And if I expand out the boiler, now these are all of the steam traps that are inside of boiler room two. And if I expand out the first trap, I can see that I have some historical data that has been taken on that point. Now, where I mentioned that this really becomes your steam trap database is an, an added uh, piece of information is we can uh, input in here pictures. So I would highly recommend that you go out, especially once you've tagged the trap, uh, take a photo of it, and then you can just simply add that photo in here. Uh, you would just simply do add, and then you would just look for wherever those photos are. Now, I mentioned, too, that uh, on board the UltraProbe 10,000 or the 15,000, you can enter in application-specific information. So when we have the STEAM application enabled, we can enter the test result, the manufacturer, the model, uh, the application, the trap's purpose, the type of trap, 
the pipe size and the orifice size and then finally there's your inlet temperature and your outlet temperature and you can do that for each one of your traps so again you can see how this really becomes your steam trap database so once we've gone out and we've taken that information that I had on that last slide there uh, the inlet temperature the outlet temperature um, you know, the type of trap the orifice size um, we're now ready to generate the report so if you want to you can you can do the report however you want to so if you want to just report on the traps that are leaking by or that are blowing through uh, or if you want to report on all the traps if you enter the test result here that the trap is okay it's not going to calculate out a dollar loss because you specified that it was okay or if based off of what you saw with temperature and then what you heard with ultrasound if you determine that the trap is leaking by or blowing through that's where uh, you will get that dollar amount for how much that trap is costing now to generate the report we just simply highlight our group and again the group is always going to be the one in bold it's always going to be the one directly below the application so we've gone out, we've collected the data, we've downloaded it in here just by simply going to communications and retrieve group from probe and that's going to take our information from the ultra probe and download it back into DMS. If I created the route here first and then uh, loaded that into the ultra probe, I would just simply highlight the group that I created or the route and I would do send group to probe and that sends it over to, uh, to the instrument. So now that I'm ready to take the data that I've just downloaded here, I'm going to generate the report. So I'm going to highlight Boiler Room 2 and I'm going to go over to Reports. Now for each one of the applications that we have over here, we have application specific reports. So underneath the STEAM application, the one that I'm interested in that's going to show me the dollar amount or the dollars lost for those traps that are leaking by or failed open is going to be the STEAM report. Now just simply do generate selected report and then we just have to name it. Name it whatever you want to, choose to save it wherever you like and we're going to hit OK. Now the next thing that comes up here is we can choose pieces of information or we can choose fields here that we don't want to see in the report. So if we're not interested in, say, the, the application type, or if we're not interested in the model uh, of the trap, then we can choose to exclude that from the report. But in this case, I'm going to uh, generate the report using all of these fields. So I'm going to hit OK. And what we want to see is report successfully created, just like that. And then we just have to go out here and find it. And here it is. Okay, we're going to enable the content first. And the first uh, page here, the first tab that comes up, we have our cost tab. So I'm just going to be conservative. Um, you know, cost of steam, depending on where you are, how the steam is produced, uh, how clean it has to be. Uh, recently, I've heard numbers anywhere between $8 and $12 per thousand pounds of steam. So we'll be conservative and we'll say $8 per thousand pounds of steam. So that in turn, that's going to uh, calculate how much it's costing me to generate a thousand pounds of steam. Uh, we're going to assume that the steam system is on 24-7. So the number that we see over on our data tab is going to be on an annual or per year basis. Now the report also defaults to uh, what percentage of the trap is leaking by or blowing through. So we're going to assume that the trap is leaking by at 50% and if it's in the failed open position we're going to assume that it's leaking by 100%. Now again if you wanted to make this conservative uh, the report in itself is going to be a little on the conservative side because if we go back to how we measure the temperature you know, I mentioned that we're using a spot radiometer and we're measuring the surface, surface temperature of that pipe. Um, it has also been said that you can roughly uh, say that the difference in temperature between the internal temperature of uh, inside the pipe compared to the surface temperature of the pipe is roughly about 10% less. 
So again, for those of you that are uh, operating at low steam pressures, uh, you know, obviously 212 degrees, we have steam. Anything below that, we don't have steam. So if you're measuring temperatures and you're getting, you know, anything below 212, you know, and you've listened to it with ultrasound and you know the trap is working, then you, you're going to need to add in roughly 10% back into those uh, temperatures. That's really, you only have to be uh, aware of that if you're on the lower pressure steam. Uh, for those of you that are, you know, higher pressure steam, you know, it's not really going to be an issue. But just keep in mind that, again, we're measuring the surface temperature of the pipe itself rather than the internal uh, temperature of the steam itself inside the trap or inside the pipe. Uh, so therefore, that by itself, uh, that tends to um, err a little on the conservative side. But if, again, if you want to adjust these and say it's only leaking by 40% or if it's only blowing through at 80%, certainly feel free to do so. Okay, so now if I go over here to the, the data tab, uh, you can see here uh, this is all the information that we've noted uh, as we were doing our inspection. So there's our uh, orifice size of the trap. Here's our inlet temperature. There's our outlet temperature, which again, temperatures with steam that equates to a pressure. We noted uh, that the t uh, after listening to the trap and checking with temperature, we determined that the trap was blowing through. Uh, we determined that this one or these two here were leaking by. Uh, this one was plugged. So again, based off of the test result that we enter, it will give you a dollar amount for how much that trap is costing you if it's blowing through or if it's leaking by. And that is how you, you would generate that report again, uh, using those steps, using that information that you uh, in, either input it in right on board the instrument or that you made note of if you're using, say, the 3,000 or the 9,000, and uh, then just simply downloading that data into the software and then generating the report. Okay, uh, fairly close to wrapping up here. Uh, well, certainly, we'll have some have time for some questions. Uh, going back to just some other uh, statistics here and some information from uh, the Federal Energy Management Program. You know, again, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about with the uh, the default on that report. Uh, we we assume or uh, the default is it's leaking by 50% or uh, blowing through at 100%. I mentioned that uh, if you don't know the orifice size of the trap. Um, uh, evidently, one eighth of an inch is probably the most common uh, orifice size for traps, or we can estimate it, uh, and that's kind of what this is talking about here. You know, use judgment to assess the actual orifice size of a malfunctioning trap. Uh, it's suggested to assume that a trap has failed with an orifice size equivalent to one half of its fully open condition. So, therefore, uh, that's why we say it's only leaking by 50%. But you can certainly see how, how costly uh, faulty steam traps are. So in just one hour, uh, here an unchecked blowing steam trap at 300 PSI steam with an orifice size of 3 sixteenths of an inch will waste 267 pounds of steam. Um, average cost of steam around $12 per thousand pounds. One blowing steam trap will waste $77 a day or $28,000 per year. And that's just one steam trap. Now, when inspecting steam traps, again, uh, we want to make note of some conditions. Uh, is the system at the correct pressure? Uh, the biggest thing with steam traps is you really need to exercise some patience. Um, you know, if you've checked it with temperature and, you know, if you've got steam coming to the trap, really a good rule of thumb is to listen to it for about a minute. Uh, if you haven't heard anything for a minute and you've checked it with temperature, um, you know, you can do one of two things. If it's, um, you know, obviously, you know, if it's plugged or, you know, we don't know how long it may be before that trap could cycle. But a uh, good rule of thumb is to listen to it for about a minute. So it's not one of these things to where you can just walk out, make contact, and, you know, within just a few seconds kind of know. Now, if the trap has failed open and you make contact with it, you're going to hear just an instant blow through of steam. But, again, you've got to listen uh, for a few seconds up to a minute to see if that trap ever cycles closed. Uh, or if it's a floating thermostatic, it could possibly be in the failed open position. Uh, compare similar traps. So again, if you're not sure, um, you know, go out and test some similar traps uh, to, um, to compare you know, what you're hearing, uh, compare temperatures even. 
so again, comparing similar traps, that'll help you to kind of get a good idea of what they should and shouldn't sound like. Again, the recommended frequency setting is 25 kilohertz. We're going to adjust the, the sensitivity to eliminate any uh, competing ultrasounds. Again, like I talked about with the valve application, uh, if you possibly can be picking up some competing noise coming from another trap or something else in the system. I mentioned researching the type of traps, and again, we have the sound recording library on our website. Uh, that's a good resource for you to go to to kind of get a good idea of what traps should and shouldn't sound like. Overall, testing steam traps can help to provide insight into the overall health of your steam system. Finding and correcting any failed traps or even traps that are leaking by will certainly help to reduce energy waste. It's very quick. It's very easy to do. Uh, also, when you're uh, mapping out your database, when you're doing your walkthrough, you know, note any accessibility issues. Uh, if you're going to need ladders, if you have traps that are behind cages or guards, uh, to where you know you may need an escort, someone for lockout, tagout. Uh, you know they put traps in odd places. So are you going to need any lifts, uh, or are the traps down in a tunnel underneath the machine? Uh, again, just note any accessibility issues, uh, flashlights. Make sure you have PPE. Uh, probably recommend wearing some sort of long sleeve clothing, um, gloves. Um, again, just map it out when you walk the, uh, the, the route, when you're setting it up initially, uh, all things to make note of. So at this point, uh, we're going to open it up for some questions. All right. Awesome, Adrian. Yeah, we did have some come through, and, and folks, you can feel free to, to type some in now as well. Um, so one that, that someone asked, would you suggest um, that the software be populated with all the traps first? Yeah, that would certainly be a good practice. Uh, now, if you're using the Ultra Probe 3000, uh, it's it's really not going to matter because the the Ultra Probe 3000 has data storage only. So you can go out and you can store data with it, and then download back into DMS, but you can't upload a route into it. Uh, but certainly, it would be a good practice to go ahead and build that database in the the Ultra Trend DMS first. Again, once you build it in, you know that's it's it may be hard work, especially for those of you that have, um, you know, hundreds if not thousands of traps. But once you've done it, you've got a good database of those steam traps. Uh, and a lot of the plants, a lot of the facilities that I go in, they tend not to have very good uh, databases of all their steam traps, um, just because it's not it's not something that they would normally think about. But yeah, certainly uh, set it up in the DMS uh, software first. And that'll certainly make it a lot easier on you uh, once you do the inspection, and then really from there on out. You know, once you've got it in there, it's in there. Awesome. Um, and how often do you suggest you know actually doing the testing? Uh, yeah, from what I see in uh, most typical facilities, uh, they're going to be doing it uh, once a year. Um, again, if you're, it depends on how you're using the steam, uh, but if it directly relates to the quality of your product, it might be something that you would do twice a year. Uh, but I would say on the average, uh, I see most people in plants and facilities doing a steam trap survey once a year. Awesome. And, um, you know, as you know, since you have been in a lot of facilities and, and you're seeing folks using this, do you find that a lot of folks are able to do this on their own or are a lot of people hiring this kind of testing out you know because you you were certainly mentioning the the safety aspects that you need to be you know pretty well aware of so um what what do you tend to see and you know any thoughts on that i guess yeah and there are certainly companies out there that will actually go out to do the service uh, you know, I guess it depends on uh, the manpower. Uh, it depends on the skill of your craft. You know, uh, is it? You know, it's just like a compressed air leak survey. Uh, most people in plants facilities can do it themselves, but then there are still some people who even have ultrasound. They still tend to contract that out. So it really depends on, again on the the manpower, uh, how much ground you have to cover. 
Uh, also, you know, the equipment. You know, if you're if you're using, say, again, an, an Ultra Pro, if you have an Ultra Pro, say, 100 in house, but yet your service provider has, say, a 15,000 or a 10,000, of course, they're going to be able to give you a little better report just because they can. Uh, it's going to be easier for them to enter that information. So uh, the skill of the craft, uh, the manpower, and then just simply uh, how much ground there is to cover, how many traps that you have. Okay, cool. Um, here's another one that just came in. Um, any experience with leaking relief valve to flare and refinery, which is similar to traps? Uh, yeah, I mentioned valve leakage early in the presentation, uh, and it's certainly uh, easy to do. And what I would recommend that you do is make use of that ABCD test method. So if that valve is closed, we shouldn't really be hearing much of anything on that outlet or the discharge side of the valve. But just compare the decibel level readings at those four points, and um, you know again if that if that decibel level is the same across all four points, that valve is more than likely open. If that sound or if the decibel level attenuates or drops from A to D, uh, it's a good indicator that the valve is closed. If the valve is in a leak by condition, your higher decibel level is going to be at the C or the outlet point of that valve. Uh, and that's a good indicator that the valve is in a leak by condition. All right, awesome. Well, um, that's it for questions. Now we had we had one that we'll we'll follow up with um, offline. But um, yeah, thanks for for all that uh, good content there, Adrian. I think I will take the screen back from you here. Um, go over just a couple last minute things and you know just Adrian was kind of concluding there at the end you know kind of talking about the value and, and how much money you know is, is is being lost or could be saved you know on the on the reverse of that um, and if you really want to get a good picture of that if this is something you guys haven't tackled or you're thinking about it or you really don't realize what what the effect is um, there's a great webinar on our website um, from you can look it up uh, under the on-demand education and then look at webinars and you'll see it's um, steam and, and leak detection at uh, DuPont and V. Guidry, he goes around to all the facilities in the U.S. Um, doing compressed air leak surveys and steam trap testing and boy the data he's got you know it's just it's amazing um, so if you if this is of interest you know I definitely recommend you know lunch one day or something sitting down and, and taking a listen to that um, really good good uh, kind of proof of, of what uh, Adrian was going over um, so that said, just to just to wrap up a couple couple things to just make you all aware of, um, you know, obviously we don't just talk about steam. We've got uh, the other applications as well. So some some new things for uh, for you to to check out. We've got our lubrication ebook, um, which you can download on our website. We've got our compressed air survey online course. Um, that's also something new. Um, so if you're doing leak detection, um, that's a great way to, to kind of on your own time, you know, from your computer to, to go through what was a full day in-person class. Um, and, we've, and we've turned it into a, a, a six module um, online uh, course. So it's pretty cool and um, something we'd, we'd love you to take advantage of if, if it's of interest. Um, then just um, our leak survey app. So that's uh, if you guys are doing leak surveys, um, you can download this from the App Store, also the Google Play Store. So it's available for Android as well. Um, and you can literally, you know, from your your phone or your tablet, you can actually uh, create a, a leak survey. So um, obviously not steam but we're we're hopefully getting there um, and we'll have that to talk about at some point but uh, anyhow if this is of interest you can find those in the, the App Store or the Google Play Store uh, and then you know as I said our website uesystems.com lots and lots of information um, we've got other uh, webinars we've done on different aspects of DMS so if if you're you know if if the software is something that you're you're really trying to learn more about, um, we've got quite a few of these kinds of webinars on there. Um, other webinars on Steam, the one I mentioned um, from our, our guy at DuPont. So so use that you know as a resource and, and definitely take a look. 
Um, great, great way to kind of stay connected, ask questions, um, see how other folks are doing things is our uh, LinkedIn group. We've got our Ultra Probe users group and our Reliable Asset World group. So just a great place to uh, to kind of keep conversations going, ask questions, et cetera. Um, and then I'll end with a little save the date for our upcoming conferences, Ultrasound World, Reliable Asset World, uh, May 9 through 12 in Clearwater Beach, Florida. Um, we actually, that's where we first met V. He came and presented at the conference and we were all blown away by it. So we, we had him do some webinars for us too. But uh, we get really, really great um, users and customers that, that come down and, and present about the successes they're having, um, how they got to where they are, you know, the bumps along the way and so forth. So if if those are um, events you can you can make note of on your calendar, we'd, we'd certainly love to have you down there. Um, and with that, I'll leave our contact info up. Um, just hit us up. You, you've pretty much everybody should have my email address as well. So if you've got questions or you have any anything you need as far as support for your software, we'll we'll get you with the right person to, to help you out. But uh, appreciate everyone taking some time today. Um, if you can, sign up for that next webinar we've got next Wednesday. And uh, Adrian, thanks again for, for taking the time to present this. And uh, we'll hopefully see you all on a webinar here.